This video demonstrates the full process of a folding bicycle into an e-bike. The first step is to put the tire on the rim and put the tire pad well. Like this, the tire pad is install finished. Adjust the tire blowhole. Check if it's properly installed. The second step is to install the outer tire and inner tire. Install the outer tire first. Then install the inner tube. Okay, the inner and outer tires are installed. The next step is to inflate the tire. Inflate the tire to half first. Don't fill it up at once. Inflate it halfway first. Then you can shake it to make sure the air is fully to fill every position. After shaking, continue to inflate the tire. The second time, pump it up to the full. Fill it up completely. After fully inflating the tire, check the safety line. If the tire line is outside, if all of them are on the outside, it's okay. If the tire line gets stuck in it, are outside, release a little air, then shake it, and then inflate it again. Adjust it well. Then install the motor on the bike. Remove the front wheel first. Then install the motor. When installing the motor, if the bike is upside down, and this is the front of the bike, the motor wire is on the right. If the car is upright, the motor wire will come out from the left. Then when installing, you must remember, there is an open fork. If there is an opening, the motor wire must come out of this opening. Don't press the motor wires. Then install the screws here. First, hang the anti-collision piece, the ring gasket, and finally tighten the screws. After tightening, the installation of the motor is completed. Next, remove the handlebar cover. It's removed here. Install the meter follow-up handle. The first step is to install the display. There are screws at the bottom of the meter. Unscrew the screws, then clip it to the front of the bike. Tighten the screws on the front. Adjust it and the position of the display. The display is installed. Adjust the position appropriately. The next step is to install the throttle. The thumb throttle is matched with the handlebar. For thumb throttle, you can install it on the left or right. On the left or right side, the position can be adjusted. After clamping, tighten the screws. Tighten the screws. Adjust the position of the handlebar, the position of the handle, the film of the display, which can be removed when you use it. Finished. After installing the meter follow-up handle, put the original handlebar cover back on. The effect is like this. It is matched with this double hall 12 magnetic booster. If it's a regular crankshaft, you can directly split the paws in half and directly fit into the gap on the edge of the axle. If it's a hollow axle, the first step is to loosen the screw. Move the crank a little bit outward, then move the paws to a gap. Then the paws can be snapped in. Before install, the paws needs to be trimmed when you on hollow axle. Trim the excess part of the edge like this. Cut it little by little until the gear ring can fit into your crank and tighten your axle. Remember not to cut too much at once. When installing the edge, the raised part of the edge of the paws outward and the completely flat part is facing inward. Then the kit, the default paws is installed on the left side or the right side. If you need the right side, please contact me when you place the order. The demo is a hollow bike. So the first step is to remove the crank. It is more convenient to install the crank directly off. Then split the paws in half and take it apart and tighten it. After clamping, put it back into the crank. Crank back. Tighten the screws. After installing the paws, install this. The fixed ring of the paws. And tighten it. Tighten it. The next step is to install the sensor. 
When installing the sensor, both positions can be installed. The distance between the sensor and the disc, this gap is about 5 millimeters. Be sure to adjust it properly during installation. If it's more than 5 millimeters or less than 5 millimeters, it will affect the sensor's sensing. Then, pay attention. First, if after installation, if the distance between the sensor and the disc is too far, you can use a sponge pad. A sponge pad with adhesive paper thickens it. Or inside. Or inside. Then, when installing it, you must pay attention to the sensor. There is a cross here. The cross-shaped logo here. It should correspond to the magnet one by one and vertically, so that it can sense the certain position. When you put it, you must put it well. For the sensor, first, put two zip TIs through it. After wearing it, fix it on the bike. First, choose a general location, and then adjust it after fixing it roughly. Adjust it, tighten it. The sensor, there is a screw here that can be loosened and tightened. It's used to adjust the distance between the sensor and disc, after adjusting the distance, tighten the screw. The distance between the sensor and the magnet is about 5 millimeters. The cross should be facing the magnet parallel. This is a pig nose bag. Can be matched with our 36 v 10 a battery. It has two colors. One is bright striped, and the other is matte black. Let me show you. Here is the pig nose. A buckle for the pig nose hanging bag. It has a waterproof zipper, upgraded waterproof zipper. Inside the box, it comes with a strap. The strap is on the side of the box. There are two hooks here. It can be used as a shoulder bag. The inside of the box is divided into two parts. This part is for the battery, and this part is for the controller. Install the pig nose bag battery on the bike. Fix it. Next. Place the battery and controller inside the box. Place the battery and controller. Connect the plug. Then the wire comes out from this place. Okay, pull it up. Hide all the waterproof plugs inside the box. It will be better for waterproofing. Zip it all the way in here. Then the waterproof line comes out from the bottom to achieve a better waterproof effect. Next, connect the motor cable. When connecting the motor cable, remember that there are two arrows on the plug. The arrows should be aligned. One of the arrows has a wire on it. You need to press it a little bit. Connect it to the line near the line. If you connect it, if the display shows error code 03, check if the motor wire is not connected properly. Then connect the 1T2 extension cable. The green one is for the display also need to align the arrows. The yellow one is connected to. The same is true for turning throttle, arrow to arrow. The throttle is connected to 1T2 cable. The booster is connected to the controller. The yellow one appears directly. Then the whole thing is connected. The pause has been connected just now. After the bike is modified, to make it more stable when pushing, we can replace the easy wheel with larger size. It will be more stable when pushing. Like the original Easy Wheels are quite small. We can replace it with our 1-100mm large size Easy Wheel, which is very stable when pushing, and smoothly remove the original Easy Wheel, big Easy Wheel, and put in the washer. Put a washer on each side. Put the screw on. Tighten it. Fix one side first. And then, on this side, add another gasket. Add the gasket. Tighten the screws. After the telescopic rod is installed, then install the 100mm easy wheel. Compare them. This is the 60mm of the original bike. This is our large size 100mm. After installation, fix the screws. It's installed. Screw tightened. It's very smooth. The sound is also relatively quiet. Long press the power button of the display. Power on to turn on the backlight function. 